Hey, welcome to episode 122 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about the dangers of debt being re-aged. And in the last episode, I talked about creditors actually re-aging your debt and how it could be beneficial for you. And all it is, is you're asking a creditor to re-age your debt so that now they're going to start treating your regular payments. If you five payments behind, your payment that you're going to make they're going to treat that as you being on time and current. They're going to forget about those other five missed payments that you made. And this can be beneficial. And like I said, too, sometimes they're going to ask for a payment or two to be able to do this, to be able to say, if he's behind five, they can say, hey, just make one extra payment. They will consider your next ones as current. Um, usually they're going to do it once every tw- in a 12 month period or sometimes um, two times within a five month, five year period. Keep that in mind. Now, Again, this is the biggest danger for all debts. Any debts being re-aged is going to stay on your credit report longer. And also, not only is stay on your credit report longer, um, it's going to make it so that they have a, more time to actually sue you, okay? Because it's going to be, when it comes down to statute of limitations, we talked about that previously, it's usually two to six years from the last time you made a payment. So now if you guys are asking them to re-age your debt, now they have, say if you were five payments behind, now they have more time because you're going to make a new payment on your account or you agreed to make a payment on your time, your account, now you re-aged it. Now the biggest danger when it comes down to this too is with these collection companies because they re-age debt no matter what. You don't have to ask them. I found that a lot of these collection companies are going to re-age your debt anyway, which is horrible, but it can be beneficial to you. So if you guys have a collection on your credit report, definitely check to see when is the last debt activity on that account. Remember, the last debt activity should be the last time you made a payment on that account or the first day that you became delinquent, okay? So definitely look and see, okay, the last time I made a payment on this account was in 2020, because a lot of these collection companies are going to change your last debt activity, which should be the last time you made a payment on your account or the the day that you failed delinquent, you did not pay on your account. They're going to re-age it. We're in 2024 when I'm actually making this video. So instead of them having 2020 as your last debt activity, which they should, they're going to have the new date, whatever date we're in, like whatever year we're in, whatever month we're in. So they'll have April 2024 as your last debt activity. That's still re-aging your debt. Again, when they re-age the debt, it makes it seem like from April 2024, they have a certain amount of time to actually sue you when it should actually be from 2024 years ago. Okay. So they're going to naturally re-age your debt, which is bad because now the debt can stay on your credit reports from seven and a half years from 2024 instead of the 2020 date. So that's the dangers of having re-age debt. And if you guys see that a collection company re-aged your debt, then I would say get on that. Let them know that they re-aged it. They need to delete it from your credit reports. And that's what I did. I tell them, hey, you re-aged my debt. You shouldn't re age my debt. You need to delete this from my credit reports immediately or I'm going to sue you. That's what I told a lot of collection companies. And that debt came off my credit reports. Re-aging is very huge, but they don't think that we know about these different things because we don't. Honestly, we don't. Um so definitely check these different dates and just know the dangers of reagent and use the reagent to your advantage. If they're messing up on certain things, just know what they're messing up on and use that to your advantage to actually get that account deleted from your credit reports or get it to the point where you're not going to pay it. So keep that in mind. I'll see you guys in the next episode. If you guys have any questions, definitely call me 833 Rakita or go to my website, rakita.com and schedule the call. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Hi, welcome to episode 122 of Credit 101. In this episode, we're going to talk about some tips for negotiating with your creditors and debt collectors. So some people, you're being nervous or maybe you just don't know what to do. I have a few tips for you all on what to do or what not to do. We all need to know these different tips. So let's go through some of these tips. And if you guys have any suggestions because you've been settling debt, definitely put them down below in the comments. We I always like to see new suggestions. And if you guys have any questions, call or text me, 833-RAKITA, or go to my website, rakita.com, and schedule a call, okay? So the first thing is, I want you guys to pick a plan that you can actually stick to, okay? And that you can actually afford. Some people just say, like, say if you, a creditor, you know, maybe it's your credit card company, maybe they say, hey, we want to help you settle out this debt, but we need you to pay 
a hundred dollars a month to pay off a five thousand dollar debt. We want you to pay this for until this debt is completely paid off. And you know that you cannot afford a hundred dollars a month because you barely pay your bills. Don't don't say, okay, I'll do that. Don't do that. Tell them what you can do and, and stick to it. And if you cannot come up to some agreement, then maybe you should hang up and say, hey, I'll call you back when I can pay this, but I cannot do it right now. Don't just agree to something that you cannot do. And that's in everything in life. Don't agree to anything that you cannot do just to just do it. I used to do that too. Don't do that. Okay. And make sure you guys ask for more than they are actually offering. So say if you were to have a collector, a collector say, Hey, um, we go ahead and settle this debt for $200. Don't just say, okay, let's do 200. I'll say, no. Um, is it a way that we can do a hundred dollars? Um, is it a way you can do $110? I can't actually afford that. What you're saying. I'm so sorry. And I cannot do it. You know, don't just say, okay, we're going to go ahead and do that. Don't just agree to it. Ask for more, no matter what, it, what it is. If they say, Hey, we, if you behind six payments on your credit card, they say, Hey, we can go ahead and take off um, two of your payments. You, you don't have to worry about doing two of your payments. Can you just do the four? Say, oh, I cannot do that. Is there a way I can do? I pay the two and you forgive the four. You know, negotiate with these companies, okay? Don't just accept whatever they're giving you, basically. And if you're not getting what you want, be okay with escalating. If the first person you're talking to was not able to do it, I say, hey, is this somebody else I could talk to? Try to escalate it, okay? That's going to be big. And never split the difference. Say if they want you to pay 400 and you want it to be 200, they say, you know what? Let's just meet in the middle at 300. Don't meet at that 300. That right there, that 300 is going to be your new minimum. I mean, your new maximum. So they say, okay, let's meet in the middle. Okay, 300 is a maximum. Oh, no, that's not, because that could be their target. Don't forget, y'all negotiating. You don't know what their bottom line is. So you're going to say, oh, you know what? Can we do actually 250? You know, you be in the middle, middle again, okay? So just keep that in mind. Try to negotiate even lower than whatever they're saying. So they're saying, hey, I want it 400, but I'll meet you at 300. No, 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 meet me again. Let's split that in half again. Let's meet at the 250. And you don't have to say it out loud. Meet at the 250. Say, oh, I really wanted 200. I think the most I can possibly do is like 250. You know, this is our lives we're talking about. So continue to try to negotiate. And again, do not be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. If you need to, just be patient. Hang up. Say, I'll talk to y'all another time when I get some money. Okay. And if you can, always try to do a settlement. Some people think, oh, let me just get on a payment plan. Like I told you, that person that may say, okay, I'll do $100 a month on a $5,000 debt. So, you know what? I cannot do that. Is it a way that I could pay you $1,000 and I could just get rid of this $5,000 debt completely? Can I pay $2,000, $2,500? Because now you're splitting that debt in half, if not even more. And you don't have to worry about it at all. I always like to do lump sums if I can help it. I don't want to get on the payment plan. Because what if I mess up with my payment plan and now we already re aged your debt, which means you can sue me and get the full amount? No, no, no. Let me go ahead and settle this debt with you and try to see if you can get a very, very, very low settlement amount, okay? And that's going to be big. And then ask them to remove your interest or if you have any late payments, ask them to actually eliminate these late payments. Um, I was just doing some re research on a Fresh Start program with the student loans. I want to make a video about this, but they're eliminating like those late payments and it's not a long time that you have to wait. So I'm definitely going to make a video on that, but you definitely want to ask for it. No matter if it's a credit card company or whoever it is, ask them, can they reduce their interest or ask them, can they eliminate those late payments? And don't be scared when they threaten to report to the credit bureaus. A lot of um, debt collectors, when they see that letter in the mail and they're saying, hey, we got a debt for you. If you don't respond in 30 days, we're going to report you to the credit bureaus. Don't get scared. Send a validation of debt letter and go from there. You can negotiate even after that point. But don't get scared. Don't freeze. That's the biggest thing. That's my thing in life because I used to freeze with certain situations. My thing is let me not freeze. Let me keep going and doing some type of action because that's huge. So don't freeze. Don't get scared. Okay. You know, sometimes they already report it to the credit bureaus. And a lot of times too, if it's like an original creditor or credit card company, they're going to report once a month anyway. It's no point in getting scared. You're going to report anyway. Or you not even know my credit report. So I don't even care too much. Your original creditor, like your credit card company, if you already got to delete it. Then you don't even care anymore at this point. So just keep that in mind. And if you do um, settle on these debts, ask for a signed release. So if they 
say, okay, you can go ahead and settle on the debt. Please ask for a signed release. And yes, you did not. I mean, yes, you did pay what you agreed to and you're released from this debt. You don't know, you no longer owe it. And don't give up um, more than you'll actually get. Make sure you get the better part of the, the settlement. Don't just say, okay, it's a $500 debt and you, you know, you say, okay, you, I'll just go ahead and pay $500. Get the better part. If you're going to pay $500, at least ask them to leave from your credit report. Make it worth your while. And I'm learning this too. Uh, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, but I know my daughter used to say stuff like this, like main character energy or something like that. Like it's all about you. Like with this settlement, don't do it unless it's all about you and you get what you want. Okay. Because that's the whole reason for settling you know, you can literally do like some people never pay it at all. Y'all can do whatever y'all gonna do. I don't care. But make it about you. Get what you want to get out of the whole thing. So main character energy. That's definitely what you guys need to do with this. And make sure you review any new contracts that you have or any um, new agreements that you come up with. Please review it because you don't know what they're talking about. Um, say if you were to have a new agreement, the person that was going to pay that $100 um, for that $5,000 debt, Maybe in an agreement, they say, hey, you allow us to sue you right away if you do not continue your payments on here. Maybe you're re-aging the debt. You have to think about these different things. You never know what you're agreeing to. So whatever you agree to or if they have any type of new agreements and you're signing it, please review it fully because you just don't know what you're agreeing to. And it's a lot of collection companies out there, too, that... When you're settled, when you settle their debts, no matter what it is, whether you pay in a full amount or you're just doing a settlement in general, like portfolio recovery, they're going to remove that account from your credit report. So know these different things, know these different uh, ways of actually settling the debt. Like usually portfolio recovery too, they're like, say if you owe that five thousand dollars, you either want you to pay sixty percent of the debt, they'll be able to settle you down all the way to the sixty percent, but you're gonna have to just hang up and be okay with hanging up and call it back again. This is not the end, you guys. Like this one takes some time, but you got to think about it. For people that have, they have a five thousand dollar debt, they some people go to companies and they'll be like, "Oh, that five thousand dollar, they only got to pay four thousand dollars now," and they're excited, not knowing that that company negotiated where you can only pay twenty five hundred dollars. They're pocketing an extra fifteen hundred dollars and making you pay that four thousand dollars, basically. OK, but in actuality, you only have to pay twenty five hundred. They take an extra fifteen hundred dollars. Think about it as you make an extra money by doing this. And this is going to be a big experience where you're not going to get back into debt. This is going to be a big experience uh, for you. You're not going to mess up anymore. You're not going to get back into debt. Now, these next episodes, I want to talk about the different negotiation letters that you guys can actually use. Understand that a lot of time negotiation is going to be a back and forth thing. Sometimes you just want to get on the phone with them. Sometimes you do want to send a letter. It depends on what's going on. So I'm going to show you and provide to you guys some letters that you can use. And if you guys have any questions, call me, 833 Rakita, or go to my website, rakita.com, and schedule a call. And I'll see you guys in the next.